Let's do a little experiment, shall we? How many of the following x-rays can you diagnose? Feel free to pause the video and take as much time as you need. X-ray number one, x-ray number two, x-ray number three, x-ray number four, and x-ray number five. And these are the answers. Now, in case you didn't perform as well as you wished, let me tell you, you're not alone. In fact, according to the Brazilian Journal of Medical Education, the average intern can accurately diagnose only 30% of these x-rays, which is a staggering number. Like, imagine if your success rates at anything in life would be just one in three. That's actually accurate. But enough about that. How can we improve our chest x-ray reading skills? Well, in this video, I'm gonna give you three simple and practical steps to do so, to learn radiology and not die trying. And step number one is to be anal about the normal chest x-ray. I know with this, I'm not encouraging some crazy fetish practice that involve your bowels. What I am saying for anyone unfamiliar with the term is just to have an obsessive attention to detail because that is precisely what you need to do with an x-ray. You gotta get to know it so damn well that it's borderline pathologic and uncomfortable to watch. In reality, this just means turning the usual low resolution representations that people usually create with x-rays to some very high resolution representation ones. As an example, take this x-ray and focus on the long part of the image. To the untrained eye, that is just black on black and that's the end of the story. But to the trained eye, that black zone actually contains a teeny tiny white mesh, which are those little white lines that should always be present. Having that inside of your mind is a high resolution representation. And the importance of having them all across the x-ray is that if you know by heart the details and in high resolution about what's normal, you automatically train your eye to detect what is not. So for instance, if you train your eye to always look for those white tiny lines in the lung, the moment they stop appearing or become bigger, you automatically know something's up. Then it's just a matter of knowing how to name those abnormalities. And so, yeah, that's the first step. Create a high resolution representation of every part of the normal film so that even the most little anomalies will be dead obvious to you. Now, how to actually do so? Well, the easiest way is by having someone teach you exactly what to look for, like what I just did with the lung markings. So, I don't know, you can ask a professor, a resident, an attending, anybody who knows the craft really. Or if you happen to speak Spanish, you can also check out my thoracic radiology masterclass, in which I dedicate two whole classes to explain exactly what normal is supposed to look like. Any way you decide to do so, just keep in mind that the most important x-ray is in fact the normal one. All right, step number two is simple, to learn, compare. This piece of advice is meant to say that the best way to learn radiological abnormalities is not to take them at face value and just learn them one by one, but instead to always compare everything you come across as a way of learning. So let's say for example, you wanna learn more about pleural effusion. What the average student would do is just read an explanatory text, watch a bunch of images, maybe a video and move on. By doing this, most people end up constructing a pattern about how an effusion is supposed to look like, which in my experience is usually just white and in the bottom corners. And the problem here is that a lot of things in fact look white and in the bottom corners. So by the time you go to the clinic and see a lower lobe pneumonia or a Hampton's hump or maybe a mesothelioma, you're gonna be all over the place because all those things, you guessed it, look white and in bottom corners. So that's why I think that the best way to learn radiological signs is not to take each one at a time and see a lot of images of just one, that one sign, but instead to always compare each sign you come across, both with the normal film and with all of the other pathologies that kind of look alike. That is actually the reason for why you often see in my online workshops a lot of side-to-side -side comparisons between x-ray films, instead of just one huge x-ray taking the whole slide. This method of learning really helps your brain to explore the nuances that separate each sign from each other and trains the most important skill with interpreting films, the ability to discriminate. Okay, and finally we have step number three, be systematic. This one's pretty straightforward. If you wanna be a pro, you gotta have a method. And look at it this way, almost everything we do in medicine is systematic. The way we ask a patient history, the way we perform a physical, everything has a method. And if you ever try taking a patient history without such a system, you probably know and you're probably aware that you end up leaving out important details. Well, it's the same thing with x-rays. If you fail to actively search the film structure by structure, 
chances are you'll miss something. And the internet is full of these kind of stories, of doctors who missed important signs that were clearly displaying the films, and that ended up being cancer or something along those lines. And sure, those are extreme examples, but in my experience a lot of MDs do miss important radiological abnormalities simply because they think that by just looking at the film, the signs will pop out to them. But no, just to be clear, you actively have to search for the signs. Now, the method I personally use and recommend is the famous A, B, C, D, E. But again, when looking, let's say, at an airway, don't just go ahead and say, well, yep, that's the airway. No, be as specific about it. Look at the caliber, the position, the angle of the carina, the presence of foreign objects, and do like that every single time. Have sort of a checklist with every single item and be religious in checking everything from the list in each one of the items. So to recap, the three keys or steps to learn x-rays. Be anal about the normal chest x-ray. To learn, compare, and be systematic about it. Now, if you like this video and want to continue learning how to become the best version of yourself, I suggest you use the one month free trial I have waiting for you and have on Skillshare. In case you don't know, Skillshare is an ad free online learning platform packed with thousands of creative classes on a myriad of topics like learning, productivity, and lifestyle. One class I especially recommend to everyone watching this video is Simple Productivity by author and speaker Greg McCune. In this class, Greg teaches you everything about essentialism, which, to make a long story short, is simply approaching productivity not as a way to do more stuff, but to do the right kind of stuff. I absolutely loved his class, and I'm sure you'll do too, as Greg really knows how to embed those take-home messages, like the ones you find in Fortune Cookies, in between stories. Really, really recommend it. Now, the great thing is that if you want to watch this class, or in fact any other Skillshare class, you actually don't have to spend a single dime to start. Quite literally, all you need to do is click the link in the description and join the community. The first thousand subscribers that click the link below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you too can start exploring your creativity today. But anyways, huge thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video, to you for tuning in, and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.